As you know, I absolutely love my bikes and my bike tech. And I'm lucky enough to be here at the Santos Tour Down Under where every single World Tour team is. So it means that these grubby little hands and these eyes can check out all the bikes in their glory. And I'm going to run through five of my favourite bikes for 2020. Come on. Oh, and that one behind me, that's not included. The 2020 bikes of Bahrain McLaren, formerly known as Bahrain Merida, look superb. I just love the colour scheme. At first, many of us had slight raised eyebrows, but I think they've carried it off on a bike design to make it look super in my honest opinion. The blue colorway, that's apparently a spark of kind of inspiration. And they've carried it all the way through from the jersey sleeve through to the inside of the forks and also some detailing on the saddle rails there too. Of course, it's decked out with a full Shimano Jura Ace Di2 disc group set. Interestingly as well, on the chain stay on the left-hand side, there are some little grooves there. That's actually a kind of a heat shrink, if you like. I had a number of photographers here hoping for a scoop that this is a McLaren bike. That means it must be something to do with with aerodynamics and wind. No, it's not. It just helps cool down the disc brakes. But I think the bike itself, it just does something for me. These colors, they're not meant to work, but they do. I'm sure you agree. Or don't you? Let me know in the comments. A bike that I really like in the World Tour this year has to be the different Cannondales, actually, of EF Education First. The reason being, the team have kind of got this identity and they're rolling with it, they're sticking with it, and everything seems to work around that. Sort of within cycling, they're kind of the relaxed team, the sort of cool dudes from California, and the colour scheme on the bikes works in that way too. I mean, we've got this sort of a, a bluey, purpley colour, almost with a bit of grey in there too. I can't really describe it. Those of you who follow GCN Tech will know full well I'm not very good when it comes to colours or painting of bikes, but the mechanics here, they've done a really good job of actually colour coordinating everything to look absolutely perfect. From the way that the head tube uh, decals have been applied on both the Super 6 Evo and the System 6 to make both of them look very similar at first glance. Obviously, once you get to the back of the bike, they look completely different, but we've got finishing touches on this bike that I really like too, including the derailleur hanger, which I talked about last year, something which is slightly different to a stock model because it's got a built-in chain catcher on that, and it's also in a pretty cool purpley anodized color. We've also got pink details on the tax water bottle cages, and then finally, on the power to max chain sets, power meters, sorry, on the chain sets, we've got these really interesting decals on there too. I do like attention to detail like that. This is why this bike is worthy of its inclusion, in my opinion. One of the hottest bikes, in my opinion, in the World Tour this year has to be the De Rosas of the Cofidis team. They've made a welcome return back to the peloton. It's been a while, actually, since they've been at that real top level. In fact, I think I have to cast my mind back to probably Giwis Balan or something like that, I think. They were the last team to use De Rosa. And well, they're a real strictly Italian affair. I mean, Ugo De Rosa, the company's founder, he taught Eddie Merckx how to build bikes. So what more can we say about him? But the bikes themselves, they're decked out in almost all Italian components, other than two bits in particular. So we've got Campagnolo Super Record EPS group sets. We've got Celia Italia saddles on there. This bike here of Elia Viviano, He's got a custom SLR boost, I think it is, on there. Uh, we've got fulcrum wheels. Of course, that is part of the Campagnolo brand too, and they spin silky smooth. Disc brake group set as well from Campagnolo, something which I almost never expected them to do because they're such a traditional company, although they were one of the first companies to actually integrate the cables within the handlebar tape, so they weren't coming out the side of the levers when it came to brifters, that some people like to call them. Uh, now, the only non-Italian components on these bikes are the pedals, and guess what the other one is? The tyres, Michelin. So the pedals are look tyres from Michelin, and I just think the bikes look really classy. They're not over the top with stickers or decals or anything like that. They just look really, really nice. I'm a big fan of them. Another bike I think is really cool in the World Tour this year are the bikes of Factor. So Israel Startup Nation, they've got a few different bikes on offer. They've got the VAM, this one here, they've got the O2 and also the One. So the riders really do have quite a few different bikes to choose from. And the reason I actually really like it is the fact that 
the sponsors of the team. I mean, they've gone away from the traditional things. You know, most most teams when they ride Shimano, for instance, then the disc rotors are Shimano, the pads are Shimano, the chain is Shimano, the rear derailleur is Shimano. But this squad have mixed things up a little bit. So they've got Swiss stop rotors, Swiss stop pads. We've got a KMC gold chain, which I love because it's bling. We've got ceramic speed oversized pulley wheel system. And having spoken to the riders, they seem so happy with the setup. Remember, it is a, a team which has advanced up a league, so it's gone up a division, if you like, in the world, into the World Tour. And they just tend to be listening to the riders from what I've been hearing. So you could expect anything to be coming in the future. Guys like Andre Greipel, or Alex Downset have been pros for years and years. They're super happy there. And just looking around at the environment within the team and the bikes, I love it. Love a bit of bike tech, especially when it's uh, not been in the World Tour for a couple of seasons. Vilja Triestina, another welcome return, in my opinion, to the World Tour. This year, sponsoring the Astana squad, and a funny little story, actually. When I visited the Vilja factory for GCN uh, back in 2019, probably around September, October time, I saw one of these frames painted up there on a rack, and I said to, to, said to the guy who was showing me around, I really like the colour of that. It reminds me of Astana. He asked us not to film it because, well, it hadn't been announced yet. They were going to be sponsoring the squad. But I think the colourway of this bike is absolutely stunning. And the mere fact that they've done it with the handlebars as well, this integrated unit here from Villia as well, is something which just blows my mind because I think so many bikes these days tend to look the same. I mean, we tend to see a lot of drop seat stays on bikes, but the colour is what often makes them stand out and catch our eyes. But something which I really like about what Astana are doing with their bikes is the fact they're not using all of the really, really mainstream components. Corrima wheels, once a, a pretty common choice, but these days you don't really see them that often. French brand, who did make some wheels for some pretty big brands as well back in the day, they're on these bikes and they've been using them for a number of years. We've also got ceramic speed components on there too, so we've got some bearings chucked in here and there and also an oversized pulley wheel system. It's things like this I really like. And also the mechanic said that bikes like this, they look absolutely beautiful, fully integrated, but to work on, it's not quite so simple, and I can really relate to that. But the good thing about this bike is they've got split headset spacers. So when it does come to uh, re-hosing and re-cabling up bikes, it's not quite as much of a headache as it is for some brands out there. And speaking about non-mainstream components, the tyres come from Wolfpack, which is a very, very small German brand. I don't know how many staff there is there, but I reckon it's probably only a handful. So these are the race tubulars, and having spoken to a number of other mechanics, they reckon that these things are as grippy as they come in the wet, and that riders on these tyres can corner twice as fast as anyone else. I don't, I don't know <laughs> how true that is. It might be a slight exaggeration there, but everyone else seems to be a big fan of these too. There we go, some of my favourite bikes of the 2020 World Tour. Let me know though, did I make any mistakes by putting those bikes in there? Get involved in the comment section below and also remember to like and share this video with your friends. And don't forget to check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. And now for two more cracking videos, click just down here and just down here.